Friends, our scripture reading today is going to be a little bit different than usual. I'm going to read five different scripture verses. And the reason why I'm doing that is I'm going to be talking about faith with you. And I thought it'd be nice to see in the New Testament some passages that talk about faith. And so I'll start with Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. And these are the words of Jesus. For truly, I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. From Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. From Hebrews 11, verse 1, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. From 1 Corinthians 13, 13, And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. And finally, from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 and 7, So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we thank you for these scriptures about faith. And we thank you for the invitation to walk by faith and to follow you and to grow in our faith together as a community. Open our hearts to experience your grace and to deepen our, also our experience of faith. In the name of Jesus, amen. Every year, I seek to at least preach one sermon, if not more than one, on our mission statement. And I do that usually in the fall to remind us about who we are and where we're going as a church. And so that's today's focus. And our mission statement developed in my first year here with the church. I came in February of 2018, and by the spring, I was working with Gary Buck and Session to come up with a new website for the church to kind of help us in our visioning for the future. And so I talked to the session and I asked, you know, tell me what words you think describe our church or what words describe where you want our church to go. And in our conversation, one word that came up very soon into the conversation was grace. That our leadership here wanted this place or or thought of this place as a place of grace where people could come not in their perfection, but in their imperfection, where it could be a, a safe place to, to come here and be just as you are. It was okay to not be okay in this church. And that this would be a place of forgiveness and love. So grace became a central word. And then we started to talk about our dreams for the church. And, and we talked about you know the desire to have this church grow and have this church bring in younger families and younger people as we continue to care for all ages. And the idea of hope came into our conversation. We have hope for this church. And so that became a second word to describe our mission, a mission of hope. Hope for the future, hope for what God would do here through us. And then one of the things that everybody talked about when I asked them about our church was that this was a warm and welcoming community, a place where people felt loved and supported, where you could come and visit for the first time and someone would walk you over to the fellowship hall and treat you with kindness. And so love became really the central word for our mission, that we are a loving church and that is shown locally and globally. So that's the story of our mission statement. And it, it developed over time so that the full language was we are a Christ-centered church of grace, hope, and love committed to mission in Newburgh and throughout the world. That focus, again, locally and globally. 
And then about a year later, after we developed our mission statement, we talked about core values for our church. And we did a survey, and we asked people to even give us more feedback about what the church looked like to them and where they wanted the church to go. And so our core values, we, we chose five of them. Uh, they became these different areas. Warm and welcoming community. Again, that number one core value that we want to be a place that welcomes everyone, loves everyone, that is inclusive and accepting of all people. Where people come here and feel like they're going to be among friends. Warm and welcoming church community was our first core value that was highlighted in the survey. A second one was intergenerational community. The idea, again, that we want everyone to be connected to of all generations from three-year-old Christopher in our church all the way to 102-year-old Harriet Fowler. And so that's exciting. That's exciting that we seek to reach all generations with the good news of Jesus and build relationship across generations. So the second core value is intergenerational community. The third core value we chose was outreach to children, youth, young adults, and young families. Again, here was our hope message of, of wanting to grow towards the future and really build up younger people and make sure this is a place where everybody can feel connected to. And so we adapted even our worship style and some of the things we did in our church to connect with children, youth, young adults, and young families. And I'm excited to say that it's been working. Uh, we have Matt Brooks and his kids, Matt and Beth Brooks, and then we have, of course, Amanda and Anthony Stevens and their kids, and we have Corbin and Mary Harwood and their kids, and so we're seeing all these wonderful kids come and families come and people of different ages. We have our kayak group. We have our college and young adult community. Cassie's running camera. You can't see her, but she's here today. We have a lot of wonderful connections with George Fox, so it's happening, and and part of why it's happening is because this church said, let's have outreach to children, youth, young adults, and young families. Our fourth core value is mission to those on the margins. And here we talk about what, what Chuck is talking about today, that we care about reaching out to people who are in poverty, people who are oppressed. Our focus on peacemaking and social justice comes from our mission to those on the margins. And of course, the the sharing of the good news of Jesus through our evangelism. All of that involves our core value of mission to those on the margins. And then our fifth core value is worship, prayer, and spiritual formation. On Sunday morning through live stream or in person, we come and we worship God and we remind ourselves to center our lives in Jesus Christ. And it's on Sunday, but it's throughout our week that we worship God. And then prayer becomes central to all that we do, that as we breathe and as we walk through life, we are connecting to God. Prayer is central. And spiritual formation is that journey to become more like Jesus, to become more like him in our daily lives and the way we trust in God. That's our spiritual formation. So I hope those core values can be reminders to us today of who we are and where we're going as a church community. Today, the theme is grace-filled faith. And as we look at our mission statement and as we look at our core values, I'm reminded that faith has been the central journey of our church, a trust in Jesus for the present and for the future. And, and there are stories of faith that we could talk about today from the past as well. And what I did is, again, choose five scriptures for us to walk through together today and what I'm going to do is, is highlight these scriptures with a basic idea related to faith as we read those verses one by one again. The first scripture I want to look at is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 20. We read it earlier, but I'll read it for us again. And, and these are the words of Jesus. For truly I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. In Matthew 17, what's happened is Jesus has cast out a demon after the disciples failed to do so. And the disciples come to Jesus and say, well, why couldn't we do it? And Jesus says, well, it's because you didn't have faith. And then he explains that they can have faith. And the, the basic theme I want to connect to here related to this scripture is that Jesus wishes to grow our faith. 
And I know that can be a sensitive subject because we need to also remember that when we are doubting, when we are struggling, that God fills us with, with grace and love and support. And so it's not like Jesus sort of, you know, challenges us in a way that's outside of his love or understanding. But Jesus does come alongside the disciples and comes alongside us and says, let's grow faith together. Let me love on you and support you and trust in me. Trust in me. And I think that's a word for us today, that Jesus wants to grow our faith, especially during this time of the pandemic, especially with some of the unrest we're seeing in our world, that we, this is a time to lean into Jesus, to have his perspective, to trust in him more, and to grow our faith. And so that's the idea that I think Jesus is getting at when he says, you know, if you have faith like a mustard seed even, you could move mountains. Just have a little faith and let's grow it together and watch out. See what will happen. Good things are going to come. That's our invitation today as Jesus helps us grow our faith. The second scripture today is Hebrews 11.1. One. I'll read that one again. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Here we have a definition of faith. And if you looked at the whole of Hebrews 11, uh, the, the writer there is telling stories from the Old Testament, stories of how God worked through Abraham and Moses. And it was through their faith in God that all these amazing things happened, but it was God's sovereign work through them. And again, the invitation is to have faith even when you don't always see the future, that you can have assurance of things hoped for, conviction of things not seen, to believe, to believe that God has good things in store for us. I understand that's hard right now, as again, we've faced some challenges in our world. And yet, Christians, we get to be invited by Jesus to hope for things and then to believe that they're going to come to be. And for our church, I think that's exciting. We can continue to hope those core values will, will be lived out in this church. We'll see even more young families and young people come to this church and we'll continue to reach out to all generations. We'll see even more impact through the mission of this church moving forward. So we can believe for that, have assurance of things hoped for, and conviction of things not seen. And then the, the, the other scripture I want to go back to now is Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says this, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. And what that scripture reminds us of is that grace is the foundation of our faith. The reason why we chose grace, hope, and love for our three words for our mission statement is because we knew that grace was sort of central to what it means to be a church. And for Presbyterians, if you're familiar with our denomination, grace really is the central word. We, we highlight that God is sovereign and that Jesus has done what we cannot do for ourselves in coming down from heaven, leaving the comfort zone of heaven, coming to earth, becoming a human being to show us God's love, ultimately dying on the cross for our sins, forgiving us, rising from the dead. His life, death, and resurrection are part of what God has done for us through Jesus for our salvation. And that is a work of grace. We cannot make it happen. Jesus made it happen for us, our salvation. And same thing with our own life of faith. It's what Jesus is able to do in us. So that's why we talk a lot about grace. And so today, when I encourage you to have faith, remember what, it, what I'm really encouraging you do, to do is to remember that God is big and God is loving and God is good and wants to offer you grace, offer you forgiveness, offer you acceptance, and then grow your faith gently and, and with courage, partnering with you. And then you will see faith grow naturally through grace. So remember, grace is the foundation of faith. We've talked about Jesus wishing to grow our faith, the, the definition of faith, and now we've talked about grace is the foundation of faith. And the fourth scripture is from 2 Corinthians 5, 6, and 7. And that is from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. 
for we walk by faith and not by sight. So I talked about grace, hope, and love. And for Paul, in his chapter in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, he talks about love, that whole chapter. And then at the end of cha the chapter, he, he's, you know, he said things about love is patient and kind and, and love never ends. At the end, he reminds everybody that there is faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And remember, as we experience God's love, we need to remember that God wants to grow our faith, give us hope, and then we can build this faith with God together through the church. And that was what Paul was encouraging the church in Corinth to do. So I, I guess there, what I'm trying to highlight is that faith, hope, and love go together. If you experience the love of God, if you experience hope through Jesus, you will also experience deep faith in God. So we've talked about 2 Corinthians. We've talked about 1 Corinthians 13. This idea we walk by faith and not by sight, what's happening there is that Paul is saying that when we die, we're going to see Jesus in heaven. And when we see Jesus in heaven, you know, we'll see our faith alive because of sight, because we actually see Jesus. When we're on earth, uh, we don't see Jesus necessarily in physical form. So we walk by faith. But that spirit of trusting in Jesus is something that we do throughout our life as we serve God. So we walk by faith and not by sight. Those are all the, the verses that we've looked at now. And the reason why I really wanted to dig into faith with you today is because I think it's such an important message as we enter this fall and as we're continuing to grow as a church during this time of the pandemic. It's comforting for me to have Chuck Zickifus here leading worship today and talking about our, our mission offering because Chuck is one of those people in this church that reminds me about the importance of faith. Chuck, when he talks about the mission of the church, he, he reminds me that we need to trust in, in God's provision for us. We need to have faith in God. That's what the church is all about. And that really is a great reminder because I think right now there's a temptation, and the temptation is to pull back. Maybe you're feeling this. I know church isn't the way we're used to it being. We can't see each other as often. It's been fun to do drive-in worship, and I've been able to see more of you through that, but it's not quite the same. And yet, now's the time to be courageous. Now's the time to lean into the grace of God and then to grow our faith as a community and to stay faithful to the mission of Jesus Christ that our church has here in Newburgh and throughout the world. I'm so excited that, that we can grow as a church during this time. And I, I actually believe that faith sometimes grows most when we go through the hardest experiences, when there are challenges in society. And right now I know there's social unrest. There's concerns about the coming election. There are worries about, you know, fires and, and other issues that are happening. And, and yet, the invitation is to lean into the grace of God and grow our faith and be courageous. It's an exciting time. It's an adventure. Rather than being fearful and pulling back or disconnecting from one another, my invitation to our church and to churches everywhere and to faith communities is to actually come together and to embrace the adventure of our faith and to be faithful to what Jesus calls us to do in these days. The church has always risen to the challenge during times of, of frustration or times of oppression, and we get to do that right now. We're going to begin a new sermon series next week, and we're going to be talking about wisdom from the book of James. And when you look at the book of James, you hear lots of ideas about wisdom. One of the things he does talk about is faith, and how we live out our faith by our works. And so there'll be a lot of exciting things to discover in James, but you can be planning ahead for that. As we walk by faith together as a community, I want to now lift up this church and each of you in prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for all of these scriptures. I thank you for the reminder that they bring to us that we can grow in our faith, that we can trust in you, Jesus, 
Thank you that even when we are filled with doubts or fears, you come alongside us gently and you reveal yourself to us and you love on us and you help us trust in you more. Jesus, in this time where, where we need to come together, where we need to be faithful to our mission, give us courage. With whatever in each individual who's listening today is going through, help them to bring their worries to you and their burdens to you. And, and Jesus, I ask that you would meet them, comfort them, and grow their faith. And thank you that we get to be a place, God, of grace, hope, and love where faith is lived out. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.